What is happening everyone? Guys, we have the challenge of the lifetime today. We are putting the Yesu Atos against the Little Tar Heel 2 in an epic and Tenawar Battle Royale. I'm gonna tell you one thing, there is a victor and it is not even close. So make sure you stay to the end to find out the results. Let's dive in and take a look at these antennas. Round one of the battle, we're gonna compare the features and benefits of both of these antennas. On my left, the Yesu Atos, weighing in at $349.95 at gigaparts, capable of 40 meters through 70 centimeters, rated for 120 watts SSB uh, and CW at a 50% duty cycle. Uh, 100 watts, 10 meters and 6 meters with FM and RIDI, 50 watts, 2 meters and 70 centimeters. Weighs in at 2 pounds, comes with a 36 and an eighth inch whip, has a PL259 plug to screw into your mount. Some of the pros of this antenna, it's very easy to install. There's no extra controller needed or anything. Uh, it works with most Yesu HF radios. The power goes right over the coax, uh, so you don't need any other wires to hook this up. It's RF sensing from the radio, so it knows the SWR and stops tuning automatically when it finds a good match. And it's readily available for purchase. But it does have some cons. It has a bigger wind load, so it does tend to flop around a bit while driving at high speeds that I normally drive at. Uh, the whip is a bit flimsy. It's, it's not uh, the most rigid of antenna whips that I've used. And you can't easily swap the whip out for a longer or different whip. You're pretty much stuck with that. Uh, there are ways, but it's not something that you can just change uh, on the fly. You also don't get 80 meters with this. You 80 meter guys, that could be a big turnoff. And it does 2 meters and 70 centimeters, but Yesu doesn't make a radio right now that does all band, all mode. Uh, like the 891 doesn't have 2 meters, 70 centimeters, so it's kind of pointless at this point to have 2 meters and 70 centimeters. So maybe redesign it with 80 meters and get rid of the 2 meters and 70 centimeters. I don't know. And on my right, weighing in at $558.95 at HRO, we have the Little Tar Heel 2, capable of 80 through 6 meters. This antenna is rated for 200 watts PEP on single sideband, 50 watts PEP, all other modes. Weighs 1.9 pounds, comes with a 32-inch whip, and it has a 3 8 by 24 thread for mounting to your antenna mount. Some pros of the Tar Heel, it does come with a little switch for up and down, uh, but it's not automatic, but you do get a switch, so uh, you will be able to control this right out of the box without having to purchase anything else. Now we have added 80 meters, so you 80 meter guys, you might be looking at this antenna already. It is very easy to change the whip if you want to swap this out. I have a quick disconnect on this, so I can very easily swap this 32 inch whip for a longer whip, thus giving me more radiating element in the air and more fars. It has a pretty low uh, wind load on it, so it's, it's very stable when you're driving down the freeway at high speeds, and it works with every brand of radio. Some of the cons, you do need an external control box uh, if you want to have any automatic controlling of the antenna, which is going to make the price go up. You also need to find a place to mount that controller. And while it's not hard to install, you are going to have a couple more wires. Basically, you have the coaxial cable and you're going to have a red and a black power wire to go from the controller to the antenna to power it. And then you're also going to have a uh, basically a control cable itself that actually tells the motor to uh, raise or lower the antenna. It's also quite a bit more expensive and they are not readily available at any store right now. You're pretty much going to have to pre-order one and wait some length of time before you actually take delivery of it. They're quite back-ordered. All said and done to get on the air with these antennas with the Yesu Atos. You need the Atos and you need a mount. I use the Diamond K400 for both of these, which is about 80 bucks. Putting the Atos on the air for about $430. And with the Tar Heel, because I have an external controller, I have the cost of the antenna, the cost of the mount, and the cost of the controller bringing you uh, close to $830. Now, let's look at some data, but before we do, I want to explain how I did this test. I basically spent a few days here at the park doing some whisper comparisons, and I only used this part of the car. So every transmission, 
when I swapped antennas, I would swap the antenna, I would swap the mount, put it right in the same spot so there's uh, as few variables as possible. I would transmit for 10 minutes on one antenna, swap out the system, transmit 10 minutes again. Then I would put the, set, the other antenna on again, receive for 10 minutes, swap out the antennas, receive another 10 minutes, and then I repeated that process over again. I also made sure to check the SWR and the ALC every single time I changed the antenna to make sure that we were dealing with the best SWR possible. Other than the quick disconnect I have put on the Tar Heel, both of these are perfectly stock. There has been no other modifications to either of these antennas. And now the moment you've all been waiting for, round two. Let's hop on the computer, let's look at the data and see which one of these antennas is the victor and which one of these antennas is the sore, sore loser. All right, so let's see what the results are. And I wanna say this is actually only data from one day. I had a couple errors in, in some of the harvesting from the other days, uh, but I will tell you the results, even with the errors, would still kind of lean the same direction, okay? So I've compiled all the data. We've got the ATOS and the Tar Heel transmit and the ATOS and the receive, and then I've uh, got everything here in results. So uh, the furthest distance on transmission, when we're transmitting with the ATOS, we reached a distance of 6,128 kilometers. Uh, our average distance heard was 1,901 kilometers. Average signal report by the stations hearing us was minus 16.32 dB. Uh, there were 648 stations who heard us and the strongest station reported us as a three and the weakest station that reported us on the atos was a negative 32. taking a look at the tar heel now same uh 6128 kilometers that we were heard by uh average distance a little bit higher uh, at 1917 uh, kilometers average signal report reported by the stations hearing us was minus 15.17 we only worked 549 stations though, so quite a drop in uh, stations that are hearing us on the Tar Heel versus the ATOS. The strongest signal report was a six and the weakest was a 31. Taking a look on receive, we have the ATOS. Uh, we heard a station 7,549 kilometers away. The average distance was 1,660 kilometers that we were hearing with the ATOS. Average signal report that we were hearing uh, the stations by was minus 12.05 dB. We heard a total of 298 different stations. The strongest signal we reported was 10 and the weakest signal was minus 31. Taking a look at the Tar Heel on receive, we heard the same distance, 7,549 kilometers away. Average distance was 1,785 kilometers uh, that we heard. Average signal report only minus 13.52. We only heard 184 stations though. So again, quite a drop off there. The strongest signal we heard was 23. There was a station I remember that was just absolutely banging in uh, on the receive test when doing this and the weakest signal that we reported was a minus 33 so where does this lead us when we're comparing all of these well as we can see the atos and the tar heel both heard and were heard by the same stations when the same with the same distance uh and your average distance on transmit uh pretty similar 16 kilometers difference uh the tar heel actually uh on average heard stations that were farther away, but that doesn't necessarily matter. Let's take a look at these signal reports and you can kind of you can kind of almost look at these in, in two different ways, but uh, one way being, well, minus 16 is lower than minus 15. So we would think that maybe the Tar Heel is hearing better, but given that the ATOS heard 99 or was heard by 99 more stations than the Tar Heel, uh, I'm going to think that the minus 16 is actually better than minus 15 because what's happening is our signal is getting out more. So more stations are reporting us, which is uh, a good thing. And a lot more of those stations may be hearing us uh, and reporting a weaker signal thus bringing this down. The fact that we were heard by 99 more stations on the ATOS than the Tar Heel speaks volumes. Uh, even though the strongest signal report 
when we were transmitting with the Tar Heel was reported as a three and the weakest was a minus 32. Uh, we were actually heard totally higher uh, with the Tar Heel and uh, we only got a minus 31. But on average, when you look at those numbers, the, the ATOS still was heard by 99 more stations. And when we take a look at receive, we can kind of switch that around. We, uh, we were hearing stations on average, minus 12.05 dB, where the Tar Heel was hearing stations a little bit less. Again, uh, over a hundred stations more that we received with the ATOS than we did with the Tar Heel were receiving better with the Tar Heel and more. So 298 stations with an average of minus 12.05 dB means that the ATOS hears better than the 184 stations reported by the Tar Heel with an average of minus 13.52. Even though we reported a 23, there was, that was kind of the outlier, there were still less stations that we heard and we were hearing them weaker. That's what this data is showing us. And those are the results that we've come up with beyond a shadow of a doubt. The ATOS blew the doors off of the Tar Heel. I am very shocked. I would have thought the Tar Heel would have just passed with flying carpets uh, on, on this test, and I was completely wrong. Uh, I'm very quickly becoming an ATOS fanboy here. Uh, really, really been happy with that antenna. Guys, let me know what antenna you use mobile. I'd love to hear from you, whether it's a hamstick or a Tar Heel or a, or a Scorpion or an ATOS, whatever. And uh, let me think. Let me know what uh, you think of the results. Is there something we can change? Is there something we can do different to uh, extrapolate this on a bit more? Like I said, if I compile all the data over the last couple days, even though some of the data I, I didn't get quite the, the way uh, I wanted to, it still is going to go towards the ATOS. So uh, <laughs> the ATOS may have a more permanent uh, place on my trunk now, guys. So anyway, if you like this kind of content, don't forget to hit uh, the like, share, and subscribe buttons. You can also follow me on Twitter at K8MRD. And until next time, we will see you again on another episode of K8MRD Radio Stuff. 73, guys.